Hello, uh, this is my 2017 Honda CRV. My battery went dead today, so we're gonna replace the battery. Just wanna go over a couple of things with you. One thing that I, I'm gonna put a link in the description. I'll put all the parts that I use uh, in the description. I would strongly recommend this NOCO uh, Genius Boost. When my battery died, uh, which is a typical way, you don't know until you try to start it and it won't start. And between the time I found it like that and, and the time I was done purchasing my new battery, I had to use this four times today to keep from asking someone else for help or being stranded. So all you do on these Genius Boost is uh, they come with these, these cables and they, you plug it in and it's called a Genius Boost because you can't do it wrong. And then you hook up the negative to your negative battery terminal, the positive to your positive battery terminal. You hit the on button and then you wait for these uh, lights to ramp up to green and then it'll click and it'll have this light telling you it's ready. And you go start your car and then you turn it off and you disconnect them and that's how easy it is. So I'll put a link to that in the description. I've had, this has saved me very, uh, a lot of times. So we're gonna be taking out this old battery. This is one from, uh, this is an O'Reilly brand. I have an O'Reilly close to my house and I like to use batteries close to my home in case you have a warranty issue, in case I need to go. This has a three year warranty. Uh, the first two years, it's a complete free replacement. So definitely recommend getting something you could replace if it didn't make it through that period that's why I try, I try to get them close to my house and so all the tools that you need is a, a socket like a ratchet and a 10 millimeter deep socket so you could just use one of these but I thought I'd give this Milwaukee a try I don't use it very often Usually I just do it by hand. I also had on hand a couple of things that are very inexpensive and give you a little bit more corrosion protection. I'll put links in the description. These are optional. These are battery terminal protectors. They go on in between the, uh, the post of the battery. You put that over the post before you connect it. And then the battery post and the connectors on the car, you put a thin layer of this dielectric grease to keep them from corroding. So we'll go over that when we put in the new battery. So let's get started. Okay, so we have our 10 millimeter deep socket. So we're gonna start by taking off our negative terminal first. We're just gonna set this, I'm try to set it out of our way, but our cords are kind of interconnected there. So I'll just have to keep a hand on that for a second. Now I'm gonna take off my positive terminal. Oh, make sure I'm loosening. All right. We got our positive off. Let's set this down. positive out of the way. What I'm gonna do here is I'll set this negative one up here in this rubber area. Get the positive over here. And you can tell that this plastic clip is, is gonna need to come off. I wonder, I mean, it's got a hex at the top. I wonder if it actually fits this. Well, look at this. It just comes off like that. Cool. So that comes off with the with the 10 millimeter also. So now we can just kind of lay this lay this aside. I don't want it to hit things. Um, might use kind of the weight. A couple of these tools here to just kind of kind of hold it back. All right, so now 
on these nuts you do not have to loosen them all the way you're just uh, batteries are held in by tension with this rod that hooks in here so all we have to do is loosen it enough so that this rod can come down and out at the bottom so we're just loosening and this is why we need a deep socket a regular socket would bottom out about right here but we have to reach the nut that's way right down there so oh boy okay stop there and see if that worked yep see how that's enough now we got the same situation over here but we don't need to do that one at all so we were able to just uh, maneuver it out that way and i guess the easiest way to i can either maneuver just maneuver that out this way i'm going to set it like this like it went in there in the same orientation and then now I'm just gonna lift out my old battery. Okay. There's my old battery, and here's the thermal cover for my old battery. All right, so this one we took out is quite a bit smaller than that one. So I checked just to make sure I had the right size. They're both the right size for this car. Um, so this is the plastic case that came with the car. I'm not gonna be able to set it, set it in here. Um, just doesn't wanna sit down flat. It bows everything out on the sides. So it's supposed to sit right here. I don't wanna set it right on this, this metal plate. If you can get a shot of that. This metal plate, I don't want to set the battery right on that. So what I'm going to do, I found some of this padding um, that I have. And I'm just going to cut a rectangle that's the bottom shape of the bottom of the battery. So that I have something to, to set it on um, to protect it from that metal. And then I just won't be able to use the thermal uh, blanket because there's no room for it. So, so, I'm just going to set it on this concrete. Set this in here. Yeah, it is a tight fit. I'm gonna have to. Thought I'd have enough to give just a little bit extra, but I don't. So, have to cut some off the side to get it to fit in there. Let's see how that does. Okay, that's going to pad it from the, from touching the metal. From my positive terminal facing forward. All right, so we got it sitting in there. Now we're gonna do things in reverse order. So I'm gonna grab this. And before we had uh,
Okay. So that's on there good. So I'm going to take off my plastic covers for my negative and my positive. I'm going to take these uh, battery terminal protectors to two pack. We just take these and we uh, put them down there like that. Helps uh, as a corrosion protector. Uh, and we're gonna take some of this white lithium grease, or excuse me, dielectric grease. I put some on our glove thin layer all over the all over the terminals okay and then also a thin amount along these right here try to get it inside this is where you're gonna have corrosion build up possibly but you can tell this vehicle is over six years old and it did not corrode, but I've seen other vehicles that have a terrible corrosion problem. Uh, it leaves quite a mess. So this is an easy thing to do to prevent that. Okay. Go ahead and get rid of these gloves. No. So remember we took the negative off first and then the positive. So we go reverse order on the way back, positive and then negative. I want to make sure these aren't, you know, tangled. But the way they've designed this is that this runs in between these two. So that's, there's nothing I can do about that. So I'm just going to leave that like that. We're going to put this on the best we can. Uh, looks like this way. Okay. All right. So that's all the way down. Want a good connection. And I want to be able to get a wrench in there. Okay, so we got that tight. It's not going anywhere. This one, I like much better. It's just made different than the positive. Let's see, how do I come out that way? Okay, so that's good. Okay, I got the job all done, got showered up and everything, and then it just hit me that I forgot to put this black plastic nut back on these threads. So the one that secured that wire. So we just wanna put that on there with our, our 10 millimeter. And we just wanna tighten that down a little bit. Just like that so it can't go anywhere so i just wanted to include that in the video so you don't forget like i forgot so all right so let's find out what happens when we start it up so let's get all of our tools off of there we got everything done right let me take the camera We'll go inside here, see what happens. Put on the brake. All right, started right up. So you'll see it go through this
system check where every light is on and I did do some research and saw that this was normal. Our system is trying to start back up. I don't know if you can read that, but it's 92 degrees here right now. It's very hot, so I'm realized the AC is noisy. But boy, does it feel good. Okay, so I saw. Okay, it says push. System has lost power. Push and hold the power button. Okay, system lost power. Takes less than 10 minutes. Okay. So we're just gonna because of that, I may have to pull the vehicle out. So I'm gonna get out and shut the hood. Alright, so we're going to shut the hood and pull the vehicle out. Make sure that none of my parts are in the way because I have kind of a mess to clean up. Okay, I have a clear path now. So we're going to go ahead and pull the vehicle straight out. Oh, it's off. It's off. Um, okay, so that. Well, let's see. I don't know. We'll find out. Okay, so our infotainment What I'm gonna do is uh, what I saw in a video so it was saying to shut the car off And then when it's off just without putting your foot on the brake without trying to start it just hit your start button once let it get into this mode and then uh, over here said to uh, press and hold and wait for it to do you want to reboot yes and so then you go into a, a reboot let it power off back on Okay, let's see. What's it gonna do here? Okay, so that rebooted. So then we're gonna try to start it. We still have our 
still have our problems. Some people say that you just have to drive it a little bit. Some videos said they drove it 100 feet. Some of them said that they were able to, you know, just do it. We're gonna uh, see what happens here, so. Okay, went away. So we barely drove and it stopped. So did reset itself. All right, well, I hope this video has been helpful. I'll put uh, links in the description. Thank you for watching.